Brain Free Enterprise fans. Boy oh boy, tonight do we have a race for you. Restream consists right now of Neo Bari on restreaming, the Bardic Panda doing the tracking, and in the booth here I have Solaris. Good evening, Solaris. You uh, scoping out the competition? Uh, I'm sorry. First of all, I'm processing these objectives. <laughs> it's like the first thing we have to talk about here. Oh, yeah. Um, Before we do that, we got, we got a race between Martin Broadcloak and, yeah, and Bear. Some amazing runners. Yeah, I suppose we should actually do the proper intro. Hi, I'm Solaris. I don't know who I bribed unintentionally to, get, <laughs> to end up on an ogre axe battle twice in a row on comms, but here I am. I am, apparently, continuing to scope out my competition. Uh, also, Martin's a great friend of mine, and Wu is somebody... Uh, I said this about Zilch before, but Wu is somebody I learned a lot about this game from, so really excited to watch both of them I on mean, the main stage got... tonight. They're both very good. Right, I mean, you've got Wu, who's been around the community for a while. You've got Martin, I think, majorly coming in around the little gauntlet time frame, but doing some menagerie of his own where it's it's almost as bad as lit three scenes yeah martin martin <laughs> martin loves uh his games that make him suffer greatly and uh has become quite skilled because of that so looking at our objectives we've got rat tail uh -huh. falcon zot super cannon and then we have to do the giant of babel and Mura and Masa, so we can't mix those up because we have to do both of them. Yeah, so here's why I reacted so quickly to these objectives. We have three moon objectives right away, and we have uh, a quote-unquote freebie with Launch the Falcon because uh, sort of a buy two, get one free, you get to launch the Falcon and you know, get half of trading away the Rat Tail. Um, so you need one, two, three, four Kiotis for go mode? Um, from the objectives, anyways, obviously you need some way underground, it might not be a hook crowd, and you need a way to Zeromas, which actually, it's just in this Darkness Crystal, so... Jet Seeds are not that common on this flag set. You tend to have to do almost everything, or basically everything, but once in a while you get an objective set like this, or a set of key items that show up that, like, suddenly Gomon could just come out of nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty thing to we don't know where some of these key items could be. The key items could be in a long chain that just takes us everywhere. And I'm sure many of us that ha have experienced this playing this flag set, uh, you get 10 to 17 out of 17 a lot of these, or even 28 out of 28, which means you've hit every single key item spot and, you know, last location to go mode. That does come up rather frequently when you have to do all seven objectives, but who knows? For now, we are off. Yeah, let's see what the starting party is going to be. I mean, starting character, Ridia. Hopefully it's not... Well, it's partial team HP. <laughs> didn't really okay. catch that starting kit, but... Uh, I caught hook. two useful... Yeah, starting hook. We have a Ridia and Tala start. We didn't talk about the Ridia start, but Ridia is not a high power start. She only got 30 hit points. She can high roll on a Sineki uh, Dancing Dagger, which is kind of enough to get going, so long as she actually lives. Tala, great utility, uh, but not much else at the moment. That starting kit did have two Boreas, which uh, cast a powerful Ice 2 AoE, and an Exit, which doesn't really matter because we started with Tala. Uh, yeah. The Tala... The exit's interesting though, or it would have been interesting, just having exit is interesting, and it's guiding Wu Bear over to the Watery Pass, which is kind of maybe one of two good places you can go for loot. And the Power Shirt along sort immediately for Wu Bear in the Watery Pass, pretty decent. Martin, meanwhile, is going to go check out what Edward in bed has for us. The amazing thing is, I want to get on. I want to get down that hook route. I want to see that gated character. Pinktail, we have an instant Avant armor, so do we stick that on Rydia or do we stick that on Tella? With the gated shops, I mean, Leviathan dropping down to tier 5, it can be in the Eblin shop, so Rydia's Leviathan could be online very quickly. Yeah, we've got a lot of great items for uh, any future melee. He got a power shirt, a long sword, which is okay, and as his gauntlet. Um, Martin's gonna raise the hovercraft. Certainly gonna turn in the pink tail at some point soon. Who you put the uh who you put the, the adamant armor on is gonna depend 
Um, I think I'm the character down the hook route if Martin wants to look at that right away. Wu Bear, meanwhile, not quite realizing that there is uh, adamant armor in his future. Yeah, I think we'll probably go there soon after. Just wanted to get some items for a generalized party with this, because you want to be prepared for when you get your character either on the hook route or on hob, something to equip them during the fight to make it go a little bit faster with this particular team. But I mean, having Tella with the exit, checking the Eblin character, you just walk all the way down and you can immediately exit out. It, depending if you loot anything, I mean, it is gated location, so you can get some pretty decent loot out there for most of the melee characters, not so much for mages, just because of how the tier items work. Well, I mean, the, the, there is the tiering, but uh, the, the randomizer still will just sort of give you like you have a uh, you have a guess of what you might be able to get from from treasure chests, but you, you never exactly know. Uh, we'll be just gonna check out. I think that is Titan. Yeah, that's Titan. That's the cool. Hob Summon. Titan's one okay. The... It's it's one of the better ones you can get here for sure. It's kind of yeah, slow. It, it's actually quite good early on, and you know the other ones would be like Sylph and Azura, maybe Odin, but. Martin finding that trap chest early on, so the rest of Eblin Cat Cave is completely free. Yeah, I was going to say there's actually interesting tension about having exit and going down Cave Eblin because of how much you want to loot. Because you tend to like run down the hook route, get the character, and then run back, and you can you can take that time. Also, Leviathan in Cave Eblin very important and our classes. Martin's certainly going to buy that. Uh, but meanwhile. There's usually tension about how much you want to loot, but now Martin knows where the trap chest is, can just touch every single tre uh, treasure along his way. Meanwhile, Wubear has found an evil wall. Yeah, evil one. I wouldn't be very happy about. No. I mean, this bot doesn't have too much HP, but still being able to try to get through it. There was a dragon whip, it looks like, in the starter kit, so already with the dragon whip power shirt. Gonna be doing some work here for Wubear. Yeah, it, it, well, either in the starting kit or it's, uh, or he looted it somewhere. But... That's gonna be good enough to get through the fight. Most likely. Yeah, I... We'll see if Rydia takes a hit if it's bad enough, but... Probably fine. Yeah, she took four damage, we're fine. Yeah. Martin finding my life staff, some, some drain swords. Can you take the pick at the character here? Eh, pour him. White mage. Okay, we've got an unknown lunar sparkle that is the hook route boss. That could be anything at the moment. Porum is interesting. Uh, we will have to make a choice. Actually, no. So we'll get Porum, and then if we do Hobbs, the twins will be online. Twin magic on its own is enough to do kind of all the overworld stuff. So we've actually got quite a bit of power. Um, and the adamant armor is eventually going to go on that palum, I think, to start for Wu Bear. Uh, for Martin, it might just go on Rydia because of Leviathan. Yeah, we're going to exit out. I expect Martin to come right back in and do a little bit of shopping. Yeah, I'd probably buy some uh, some hourglasses and maybe that Leviathan Orb. There's some thought of maybe trying to do some of the uh, Eblin Castle. Um, if you can get some levels. If you can kill one of the trap chests to get the levels, then you can clear the rest with Leviathan. And you can certainly do it with the hourglasses. So, I mean... We may, see, we, we may see Martin make that play. The thing that makes it kind of less good for me is we already have adamant armor, and we don't really need the holy swords. Uh, so you're kind of doing it for the experience, I guess. But... The experience at least two of those locations is actually fairly good. and Yeah, it's a good amount of experience. Leviathan Rydia early is just going to speed up the a lot of the overworld checks in a general sense. Yeah, but it is about the time spent doing those trap chests, and Martin uh, looks like is not interested in taking that. We're just going to start our standard routing here, head, head down to Atline, see what's there, and then Martin will go to Hobbs after that. Wu Bear, meanwhile, taking his trip down the hook route. I'm going to be agreed with that, uh, Porum, and, you know, d does, does Wu Bear keep the Rydia, you know, by the Leviathan? I mean, it is 40,000, but I mean, it can be well worth it. Yeah, so I, I was going to mention this and I, I forgot about it, but when he, uh, I was going to say to remember the ice armor and ninja shirt that Wu found at the back of Hobbs there, because those are both worth a lot of money. And we see him sell both those items and a few other things that he had looted. And uh, 
had a healthy amount of money, over 80,000 uh, gil there. Ooh, though, for, for Martin there and Antlion, just adding more and more agility, Sork Robe. I mean, and a Sork Robe, pretty good. All the mage gear? Like, yeah. what is this? This is definitely a high power start, even though <laughs> even though the team doesn't look high power, but that's what this flag set does. It's T Wildish. There is good loot kind of everywhere. I mean, I'm all for it. You know, let, let's go mages. It, it's something that you really don't see in this in this flag set too much as an all mage party is usually it's just find Cecil a shiny stick and adamant and let him go. You don't see it that often, but sometimes it's, this just gives you mages, and it's just sort of what you need to do. Now, if, for instance, this gave... If Antlion or uh, any of the next couple early game checks gave a Darkness Crystal, suddenly you, ha you get to think about, um, do I want to do a D-Machine grind on the Giant? You have the Tella, you can get to Ordeals. Not the Darkness Crystal, it's the Pass instead. Useful for later, does nothing at the moment. Yeah, at least so you can full clear the rune and not have to worry about making that long trek back down. Yeah, but uh, D machine is not a thing I like doing on this flag set, but like once every, I don't even know how many seeds, I, I do think it's going to come up. This could end up being one of those seeds. It's right. always unlikely, but you never know. Just because Rhea needs so much uh, experience to get to nuke, I mean, it's a million experience. Now, Granted, there's if you have 10 key items, you have a half a million sitting on that giant that's an objective. So you could probably do a partial D machine and blow through those rest of those spots and finish up with the giant experience. Yeah, there's certainly extra incentive to do that giant because, or to like do a D machine because of that giant objective if uh, things line up along that way. You do end up wanting those 10 key items quite badly because, uh, like you said, it takes an awful long time for Rydia to get to nuke without 10 key items and without slingshot, which is just... Slingshots aren't... you need five party members for that, and we only have max party size four, so it's just not a thing you can leverage. Uh, so it would be a very, very long game machine grind to get Rydia to nuke, but maybe you just get Pal in there instead. I mean, it depends on the party and how much power you have. You want some sort of way to get through that giant the two objectives there at, at a reasonable speed. Uh, so a partial grind is a lot more tempting when you have like good melee characters that can you know do really good work in the mid 40s as opposed to mages that really just need to get to nuke or they're not really nearly as good as they could be. Looks like Wu's deciding to stick that admin on the Rydia. I mean. Okay, I mean, they're gonna power up that Leviathan or any of her summons with, you know, Titan on, in the pool as well. But I think Leviathan's probably gonna be used more. Yeah, Leviathan, it also does double duty if you ever need to use the, the Dragon Whip. Um, the Dragon Whip might actually be the best weapon that Wu has available to him at the moment. Right, doesn't have that arty bow. Um, but I mean, that aren't switching over to Leviathan because I've uh, got enough MP. It does cost quite a bit, but once Rydia gets some levels, she's going to be able to cast it quite a few times, and then, who knows, maybe we'll find a, a Bahamut summon later on, and then we can blarg everything. I like Martin checking this item shop here, and we're, we're down in Fable Defense, uh, because, and I like doing the next few item shops, um, the weapon shop I don't, I'm not so interested in, though it's probably mainly about finding a Cursed Ring, which would be very useful, but... Um, I like item shop checking with mages because you really want ethers uh, quite badly. Cabins, you'll also accept, um, but ethers are just kind of better, more expensive cabins if you have a white mage anyways. Um, that would really accelerate the plan of just leviathan-ing leviathan everything to death. Sure, I said that weirdly, but whatever. Yeah, words are hard. <laughs> words, words are hard. We've Speaking got, of words, uh... Mylon has a few of them at the end of this fight. Yeah, we've got a dance party going on here. Uh, we're about to wash that party away. Yeah. Sorry, the joke was this party is all washed out. I missed it. Darn it. <laughs> and we don't even get the uh, the oh my body because uh, it was so clean. No. That script no. was washed away with the. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I. Oh my God. But I mean. 
If we need so few key items, we could get any of the. Okay. What? <laughs> That's an objective. That's the rat tail from the football defense. It, yeah, uh, we just need tower key and darkness. We... That's the... if you get the tower key and darkness, that just leverages it more to. I want my end game levels now. So that puts D machine a little bit higher on the table. At least my it is... eyes. Oh, it doesn't just put it higher on the table. If we get darkness and the tower key, and now the tower key you do have to get underground, but um, let's say the hook route is our only way down. We have an uh, unknown sparkle there. I mean, that demon machine grind may almost become required. It really depends on what happens, but if you have like a 20 minute go mode, which could kind of happen, then you don't want to really do any extra checks. And yep. uh, that means you need experience, and the fastest way to get experience at that point would honestly be to do a very long demon machine grind. Or at least a somewhat long demon machine grind. Uh, well, and get, and whatnot, but. <laughs> Speaking of quick key items, we just got the tower key from turning in that rat tail. Oh my. Well, so we're darkness away from go mode? Yeah, pretty much. Is darkness that where we just ended up? Mm hmm. Goodness. Uh, well, Martin's yeah. dropping down at ordeals. Yeah, because one, one key item from go mode is definitely on mind. And sorry for cutting you off, but yeah, we need uh, we need access to Tellus spells like immediately. Yeah, I have no mm -hmm. Oh, we do need um, we do need the Earth Crystal. We're two items. Thank you uh, for the correction, chat. Zot, yes. Okay. Yeah, we need Zot. It's still, I mean, for this flag set, do items to go mode? Thirteen minutes in, it's kind of like that just doesn't happen usually. No, it doesn't. It just happened to to roll the the objectives all right next to each other. <laughs> We've got the other mile on here. So I'm having to worry Wrong side of the bridge. But yeah, it, it's okay. a French vanilla. <laughs> Mylon said normally doing the back attack uh, got a little antsy, decided to go for the front attack instead. Q2 doing a surprisingly little amount of damage, but this fire too will just burn Mylon's set away. Well, it was a cast cure too, and I'm not sure. I think the Porum has the Artie Bow on, so reduce in the will stat there. Yeah, that's my guess. Yep, oh, yeah. Thousand, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mylon said, who, if you happen to not know, we talk about this all the time, but if you happen to not know, Mylon said is floating. I promise you, there's like maybe a tiny pixel above the ground. He's hovering. Uh, he is floating to give him immunity to the Quake spell as the elemental fiend of Earth. And that was sort of their way of enabling that. Even though you really don't have Quake at this point, you could get Quake with Palin, but it would take a long time of grinding. But yeah, that makes him weak to arrows, is the point I'm getting to. And spears. And harps. And spears. Yep. Well, oh, Jonathan about wave? to, uh. <laughs> so, Jonathan <laughs> about to, uh. <laughs> meet his maker by uh, himself. Yes, he is. Yeah, Hi. I was like, was it Wade? Let me show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Good talk. We washed away, we washed away that Leviathan. The old, uh, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself with a wet noodle? <laughs> I hear those kind of hurt sometimes. Well, if you're the Rydia on these teams with Adam in armor, yeah, they sure do. Let's see what we get here from the Crystal Room on Ordeals. Uh, how how quickly does Neobari want this uh, seed to go? Oh, I'm not sure if I want like instant go mode or if I want one of these two key items to be hidden behind the worst chain ever. Okay, just an elixir. No progression. No progression, but... I wouldn't feel bad about any reward here because you're almost certain your opponent's going to do it. Your opponent also knows you could be getting quick, pretty quick to go out here, and otherwise you have a hook wrap to deal with with only these four characters. Uh, getting the utility from Tella online is uh, really pretty important. Yeah, and, and as at least as, as the good old Mars Supio always says, you know, if you have a hook route, you generally want to do everything you possibly can before diving that hook. Yeah, definitely. Once in a while, especially when doing the hook route is an objective anyways, you'll see you'll see runners maybe fade 
a longer check, like they may fade the twin harp. Uh, there is always the concern, though, that you just skipped where the magma key is, which would feel really pretty bad. No, or you skipped a pan. Yeah, that's that would be what another it comes bad down one. to is. But yeah, it's a it's a um, it's a gamble, right? Mm hmm. Because yeah, some people, when they get underground, they want to have a path to go. You know, if I've still got checks above ground, you know, is there a panther that I could be doing first, or do I just go straight to dwarf or pick up the freebie from Free March? Want a direction to go to when you get underground? Yeah, and the routing is very important in this flag set because because you tend to have to do a lot of the seed. It, it instead of where you go, it 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 kind of becomes more about the order of things that you do them and uh, you know what is more efficient essentially. Aw, no nope noodle at sixty five k health. Sadness. Yeah, no ogo pogo on the hook route either. So. It's kind of annoying to find here because it does get that 50% hit point wave off at a spot that should be free. And then depending on who the next boss here is, it, like, it, I'd say it could be annoying, but we have Adam in armor. So there's going to be a lot of this could be annoying, but we have Adam in armor going on this seed. Uh, and Oct Octomam is, you know, water is not an element, but I swear everything is going to be weak to water right now. Yeah, everything's going to get washed away. You, you would think that an aquatic beast would be resistant to something like wave, but uh, no, not at all. Aquatic beast, I see a, a monster swimming in, uh, in gravel. <laughs> yeah, he likes to do that. Just the legend sword, so that hook route is our progression underground. Uh, so that knocks off Wyvern from being who's there, so we've got either Plague, Pale Dim, or D-Lunars sitting there. I didn't check in their starting kit how many Star Veils they got, but um, Star Veils were in that Cave Eblin shop. If they're smart, they'll buy a couple more if they've only got two, let's say. Uh, would be very useful against the D-Lunars. Any other boss down there I think will not pose that much of a problem. Uh, Pale Dim... Heldim counters summons with Quake, but you can float your party with Tella, which counters that. And uh, Plague with good anchoring, you can just sort of Zerk and cheese it that way, or even without good anchoring, you could just sort of, it's slower, but you could play, you know, like the tag of like, yeah, knocking a party member down. The, the thing is, you have to worry about that Adam and Armor. It does give you resistances to everything, including float in battle. Can you float on the um, overworld? And uh, yeah, then go you can, into battle, you, will you still be floating? Well, here comes the problem, I... is in the, if for the ruby spot, you get the free heal beforehand, so it resets your status. Oh, uh, you have to do it in battle, I see. Well, if that came about, I'm not even sure Quick would hurt that much, and if it did, maybe you just have to reset. If that's I the think, case. I think, take Quake, the armor off. I think Quake is one of the uh, non-elemental attacks. Generally, it be, it's yeah. just virus. Yeah, with Radio with her low uh, amount of health, it still could hurt quite a bit. Mad Ogre is... Okay, so this is a trap chest at uh, Castle Eblen. I think Martin bought some hourglasses, might have wanted to throw those here. Not only just to make this fight safer, but um, just save time, because the ogres all like to punch. Uh, and every you know round of three ogres punching is bleeding, maybe, I don't know five to ten seconds or something like that, and yeah, the hourglass goes off. Yeah, and they also punch really, really hard. Those those arms are quite, uh, quite big. Yeah, I mean, the Rydia will never die with the Ottoman armor on, but you also want to get through the fight, and Rydia's not the one killing them. No, but Tell staying down, more than likely going to be the anchor uh, for that poke route, because you generally would like to have an anchor for the King Queen Evelyn spot, because it, it's quite fast there. Yeah, definitely. Now, this is a play that, for me, feels more about the experience than really anything, because um, there really is nothing left to do except go down this hook route, and you would like... I don't know if Palom has Quake yet, but you'd really like that spell on him, at the very least. I don't think Palom has Quake yet. 
I think he might he's... spike another adamant armor too, which would be nice. Yeah, Palom's two level short of getting Quake, I believe. I think he learns it at 23. Yeah, and both our runners know. really have taken a very similar route here. I mean, we're both... This is neck and neck. We've both done all the same things. We're both in Castle Ubland, taking on traps before going down the hook route. Same party, which of course, you really had no choice. Like, this is the party you got. Actually, uh, well, you had Sid at... Uh, you had Sid as an option, Baronin, but neither runner wanted him. Nope. There is another Ottoman armor here in Castle Ubland, so we're gonna have two of them going down the hook route. Yeah, and I think Pat Fallon gets the other one. I mean, that's a strong choice there, boosting up that quake. Yeah, you really want to put the Ottoman armors on your damage dealers this early. Mm -hmm. Just keep them safe and also accelerate your damage. And we have the final Black Cat Lamia. Gotta be careful of those Black Cats. Uh, they, they can bluster your party and, and, and do bad things. I, I or to steal a pun, them. or to steal a pun from chat, we can just wave goodbye to them. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Cat's so good at that. We need to get more ideas about these waves. Did you catch what that that item was? I missed it. No, I did not. Chat, if anyone saw, let us know that Wu Bear went by it so quickly. Thank you, Nobar. It's an x -Kel. Well, if we find a Cecil, we've got the Holy Sword. Yeah, Not surprising. Castle Ablan had an Excalibur and an Adamant armor in it. It's got the Cecil starter kit. Yep. I mean, it comes to the point of... Depending on when you find that Cecil, do you take him? You know, I, I know. Yes, yes unless yeah. you're, you're you're at like end game levels already. Yeah, you would have to be hidden behind the giant, and I and I think our runners probably wouldn't take him at that point. Uh, yes, a base level Cecil can do a lot of damage, but at that point, you probably already got power overwhelming. Bear deciding I don't need the other uh, other trap chest here. Just going right through. Yeah, I'm, I mean neither of them really need anything. They just need to take their two adamant armors and run over the seed. Really, at this point. Now, the one thing that would be on my mind as a runner in this race is that, unlike other seeds of this flag set, where Castle Upland is a gamble you're almost guaranteed to end up doing Castle Ublin because the seed is very linear and there's not a lot of experience available and you have these mages. So you have a lot of incentive to go take those trap chests. So, like, you're pretty sure your opponent also has two adamant armors. It's not like you spiked an adamant armor and you suddenly have a major advantage from it. It's, it's like, oh god, I have to play this very linear race with my opponent. Like, this is really down to who is the more efficient runner at this moment. That would make me very nervous. Yeah, Martin's biking back into Evelyn item shop here. Gonna be clearing out some inventory. Maybe thinking about picking up uh, some extra star bales here. And yeah, we've got uh, Dr. Luge. So it talks a lot. So, in speaking of efficiency and why I would be so nervous at the moment, Martin is choosing to do a little bit more shopping here. And because of that, Wu is now ahead. Wu is down the hook route. He's already at the boss. While Martin is picking up more hourglasses, which may very well be useful later. They may not be, though. We're also going to take a check here back at the weapon and armor shop. I don't remember if you saw these before. Uh, picking up some uh, future gear for a ninja. We have a full moon and a thunderclaw, both very useful for Edge, uh, if and when we find him. And then Martin's going to make his way down the hook route. But because he'd spent that time shopping, um, and maybe a couple other things, I don't think it's just the shopping, but uh, Wu is at the very moment anyways, kind of edged out on the uh, kind of the efficiency standpoint here. Yeah, I think what happened is that Martin ran out of uh, MP on Rydia and wasn't able to cast Leviathan on the Black Cat Lamia chest. So just uh, 
had the virus and, and berserk up the forum there. So it took a little bit extra time in that trap chest. Yeah, that's where finding a shop with ethers would have been very useful. Unfortunately, none of the shops kind of in the town so we're efficiently along the way. None of them have them available for us. No, and that's it's something to worry about is you gotta, you gotta keep track of that MP. It can creep up on you. You start a battle like, oh, I'm out. Oh boy. Not like I've done that before. Oh, we all have. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't, you're lying. <laughs> and it's generally on your white mates that you run out of MP. And it's okay, plague. we've got plague. I mean, both our runners have party bows. Uh, and we've got at least two Zerg casters. We could just equip some bow and arrows on our two adamant wares and zerk them up and put the controller down. Yeah, because we've got two mages that want to be casting spells, what we see Wu doing is having Tala off himself with a virus. Uh, somebody's going to end up picking him up, and then this is... We're going to be repeating this while Porn is berserked with her bow until the fight's over. So this is sort of a hybrid version of that. Um, you need the two Zerkers to really guarantee. Two RA1 Zerkers, so they need to be um, two and a half times faster than the Anchor, which is easily achieved with adamant armor, but we've only really got the one viable Zerker. Unless we've got two good bows, which we very well could have, but uh, Wu's just choosing to kind of go through the spells instead, which means that Tella needs to die occasionally. Yeah, I know Martin had at least two arty bows, one from Antline, one from Avalon. I think may have sold one, but I think still has the Sammy bow as well, unless he sold that too. As we see Porum doing 2k to that plague. Because plague is flying. And he actually looks like he's flying. Yeah, I was going to say, actually flying. <laughs> Unlike not the like, orbs. Yeah, not fake flying, actually flying. Now, yeah, but 25,000 health to get through at this spot. It's going to take a bit. Well, while we are chewing through what's left of this hook route, I will take the moment to shout out the restream team. We've got Nyobari giving you the restream here. Wouldn't have a show at all without really any of us. Um, we've got the Bardic Panda doing our tracking. Thank you so much for that. And then, of course, Tybalt here of my co-coms. Follow us. We're all pretty great. And follow the runners. Martin and Wubear both really, really, you know, really uh, well-skilled runners here at a very, very close race. Yeah, as, as Wubear gets through that plague, Martin going back to, to safety save because it could be a, a nasty moon boss here. So wants to just take a little bit extra safety. I don't blame the safety save, but I, I honestly don't really love it just because we've got the two Ottoman armors. I don't think there's anything... Like, okay, let's say it's d then uh, you can frog them with Star Veils. If you've only got the one Star Veil, it, it's a little tricky to do it, but it's still doable. Um, if it's Plague, you just Quake, and if it's... Uh, sorry, if, if it's uh, Paledem, you just Quake, and if it's Plague, then you have to wait through that fight as well. Uh, so we'll go down the hook route first. Did you catch the top of Tower Boss? I actually missed no. that. No, I did not. Ooh, it just like snuck by my mind, but Wu has that information and the tower key. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be that shocked if Wu just steps down immediately and uh, does both of those. You could even see a half tower play like that's a really big gamble to do that. But I mean, we're stepping out of this tower immediately. I'd be very tempted to just drop down, hit a tent, and go right back in. Yeah, because we've got the tower key. We're right here. Uh, well, never mind. Wu, Wu going straight to Dwarf, going, I'll be back later. Okay, so this is the character focus. We're going to Dwarf, uh, and hope to spike a Cecil here, or even a Fusoya. Yeah, I mean, we, we do have the shiny stick, so yep. th th we have the we have the equipment, we want the character. I can definitely see that. I've, I've been in that situation myself, and it's, you kind of get a little tunnel vision on, 
I want X character because I have the equipment. And sometimes that can that can lead to going on some rabbit holes. Uh, find some ether twos, pick some up. Ooh, that's really useful. Uh, <laughs> that shop only had ether twos, but that one item it had in that shop is honestly quite good. Looks like we've got some vanilla dolls. Uh, they're not going to be very happy. Like much of this seed, they're not going to be very happy to be on the business end of a Leviathan cast. Yeah, no, and, and Martin down, both Palom and Rydia, just a zerked up poor Mantella, uh, holding A. We get through this fight. This is, uh, this is a bit sketchy. You really want the two Berkers going? Um, holding, Martin's holding down A here because, um, what he's doing is that the, the for like implementation detail reasons I barely understand and certainly um, am not going to be able to explain. Uh, there is a system of there's like a priority system of like does a character's uh, count go down uh, and they die uh, or and like any num other number of status effects by constantly attacking uh, at the kind of agility that he's at. He uh, the the. The battle is sort of skipping over the fact that the characters should die and the count never goes off but you have to you have to take actions in order to uh trick the ai that way otherwise the teller would have died and then with only one actor the porn would have died but smartly knowing that that's what he needed to do gets through the hook route yeah we were finding the edge picking up the edge and ditching the ridia uh no lunar sparkle up there at the top Spider-Man pointing them? Yeah, I mean... Sort of? I mean, who, who we have left in the pool for, for Lunar Sparkles, uh, none of them are really scary up there. The magic is is terrible, so even Wyvern uh, is not going to be too scary. I wouldn't be surprised if both Adamant Armor Wearers would dodge and I can nuke up that spot. Because yeah, I want to say it's, it's either one or two rolls up there for, for the Mega Nuke. I believe it's just one roll. That spot has abysmal magic attack. Well, well, I mean, both our runners deciding, nope, we're going to dwarf. Yeah, they want the character. I, I don't blame them. I part of me is, is on this mindset of of doing my objectives and like, what if there's this tiny world where the earth crystal and um, darkness came from both of the tower objectives, basically. And especially if, because uh, you want the Earth Crystal, if the Earth Crystal came from one of those two spots, then you go do that. That's two character checks and an objective versus Dwarf, which is a longer check and only one character. That's why it was on my mind to drop down uh, immediately. But both our runners playing very, very, very similarly, yeah, making a lot of the same choices here. Yeah, just, just uh, like a delayed mirror matchup. And we get a pan. Well, okay. Pan is that, a very, very nice pickup. Three more key item checks. Yep. That means that Dwarf very well might have ended up being the play. And then we're uh, just... But, I, I, sorry, again, Martin uh, doing a little bit of extra shopping here in Blue Knot is uh, kind of keeping Wu a little bit ahead at the moment. Nope, but, uh, but I mean... We checked the item shop, but Martin went ahead and checked the weapon shop as well. I mean, if you're just looking for some little bit of equipment, I mean, you're probably not going to try to loot chests anymore, just because, you know, we have the few item armors. We've got, you know, people that will eventually be able to wear them for, you know, physical. But resources like arrows do eventually run out, so picking up, you know, some extra Sammy arrows is, you know, could be a heads up play of at least having extra ammunition. Yeah, the extra time shopping is always uh, this calculus of will I uh, make the time back up uh, for, based on what I bought? And there are a lot of worlds where that ends up happening. I would at least love to see the character information, because if you knew like an edge or a Cecil was coming, if you got a Cecil, I mean, you're done, right? You've got an Excal, you have just everything you want. If you got like an edge, then maybe you want to check that shot because you'd like to have more than <laughs> long sword cat claw for your edge. Mm. 
and, and doing that extra shopping that Martin had done in Eblin with that full moon, gonna be able to back row that edge right out the gate and have a decent weapon for him, uh, besides just a longsword. Yeah, edge with uh, the full moon is a very, uh, a full moon is a good weapon. It, it just doesn't have very great accuracy, but it has the power of either a longsword or a ninja sword. It's actually quite strong. So he'll be able to put on long and full moon and be a lot more effective at the moment with that edge. Yeah, the one downside of the full moon is the uh, the animation time that it has. That's true. The animation of the attack is not nearly as quick as most other weapons. No, or most other wait. melee weapons. Yeah, because you gotta throw it and then wait for it to come back. When you have two, it's twice as long. But Wu... Uh... Kind of right into the tower after that Dwarf Castle play, right at the top, not even saving, which is a play that's endearing to my heart. This is a play that I would make. You you, you know you're in a close matchup, and you. Th this is like, I'm just, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be aggressive and save as much time as I possibly can. I feel very strong. I know there's a sparkle up here. Hopefully it's on Wu's mind. If there's a Wyvern here, I can get out one Star Veil vale as a just-in-case, and otherwise probably like dodge with an Ottoman armor. It is Wyvern. It is Wyvern. Did set it Immediately down Immediately in to... his menu to get he the uh, Star Vales out. Oh, he oh, set the just... battle speed. Yeah. yeah, he set the battle speed down to three just in case it was a Wyvern. So was definitely able to get at least one Star Vale off. And... Everybody was down. Cause... And it's smart because his other party members died. The, f the, the interesting thing about Wyvern when you play with the battle speed, for whatever reason, just the way things end up playing out with... Uh, the timing of battle speed and whatnot. And this is something I've talked to with, with Martin about before. You end up wanting to be at this fight at like one or two, or I guess maybe three uh, battle speed, or you want to be at six because you do not have time to get off more than one Star Veil vale on any battle speed setting except six, naturally. Now, if you do run buffering, you do have a lot more time, but then you, you know you have to run buffer very, uh, very well. There is a run buffer you can do, which, you, when the Wyvern battle starts, you go into your item menu immediately, you use uh, your Star Veil, and then you hit running away on your way out, and it's called like a run buffer out. What happens is that the message can't run away on top, freezes the ATB for the moment that it's there, and ATB in this game, like, it, it, it it's ticking while menus are drawing, like, in and out, so you end up saving time. It, it lets you get a Star Veil off, basically, at battle speed one is what I'm getting at here. And then you could either get you'd be in that battle at really uh, at really quick speed, or dropping down to battle speed six, while it would be slower, would have let Wu have more of his party members up and then get going. Now, why even at this spot though? Like Wu is showing, you just get your party members up; it's not really going to be a problem. The spot's pretty slow compared to his adamant armors, and it's not very strong. So he'll get through the fight pretty well here. Learning with Solaris. <laughs> I have a lot of technical knowledge in this game, but it's very scattered. <laughs> Not a lot of it is detailed, but uh, run buffering and wyvern timings is one thing I do know about because I, I tested a lot of it. I, I loaded up a seed with, um, you can do configurations. Uh, it's at the bottom of the, the make screen where you can set like force a boss at a certain location and then that boss you can trigger at Baron Inn. Or a Baron Town, I should say. Speaking of Baron, got a Baron key from the top of tower. We'll see if that's useful later. Um, but anyways, I um, so I set Wyvern as a boss spot somewhere, loaded that seat up, and then just ran at Wyvern at Baron Inn and played with a lot of the settings to see what I what I could and couldn't do against it. It's really interesting. It's a it's a good practice tool to, um, for certain bosses that way. Yeah, instead of having to find the boss in any particular location and figure it out that way. I'm talking to you, Wyvern at Ribbon Room. <laughs> Demist is nice to find in the cannon room. This boss is usually free, or certainly more free than other bosses because she gives you uh, time, uh, but she's not free from the the point of time spent because you really can't efficiently berserk against her without like a silver staff uh 
at a really high hit point spot, she would have been very annoying, but it's nice to see her here, don't have to worry about her later. Yeah, definitely. You, you hate to see bosses here that just eat up more time with their scripts, you know, like Gauntlet there, Water Hag, something like that just makes that check a lot longer to do. I love the hi-fi moment we just had, the high-five. Martin yep. and Lou passing exactly by each other, synchronized uh, <laughs> cannon room explosions. The difference here, though, is that Martin did the tower key on his way up, which will let him reset if he doesn't want this key item, but it turns out that he will. Uh, whereas Wu Bear just ran up the tower, didn't even save, just said, you know what, I'm taking the experience, whatever this key item is, and I'm running with it, and then now he's going to run out. Uh, Wu continuing to gain small advantages in time here, and uh, those advantages are at the moment adding up. Now, we do have finally points of divergence here because we have a pan, we've got a barren key, and we've got whatever this tower key is going to give us. And we can't forget about that fame arch. We got a free key item down there and two other key item locations, getting just a spoon from the tower key, so not really any progression. Great dart, though. The cannon room was an objective, so we had to do it anyways, and the Baron key is possibly a um, progression, so um, I don't mind having a spoon. It's ten th it, it deletes 10,000 hit points off of any one boss that, that you would, you know, you would like to against. So it's pretty handy to have. Well, speaking of Wyvern taking on the entire party, I'm pretty uh, dodging. It, 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 ooh. Okay, so Martin, yeah, Martin cast Leviathan and then quickly realized that uh, Wyvern will counter with a Mega Nuke. A pretty low power Mega Nuke, but it's still, it's still enough to possibly wipe your party out. He could have played the roulette game of like, let it go off and see if uh, the counter nuke, if Rydia dodges it, but... Well, Rydia did uh, have a Star Veil up, it's just Wyvern had decided to cast Nuke. You know, it's a 50 50 of it hitting uh, Palom or Rydia. Oh, I want current them, life totals. Yeah, current life totals, it would have killed either one. So, not even taking the chance of the 50 50, just resetting out, going, I want to be better prepared for this fight when I come into it. So, I missed because of the, the Martin's Wyvern situation. I did miss what was in the Fame Arch freebie. Wu, I did catch the Wu saw both a blue robe and I'm forgetting now, something else that both looked kind of doable to me, but he was just not interested in them. Uh, chat saying package. A, yeah, package. Yeah, DKC. It was DKC at the Queen spot. Okay, actually, that's not very doable. You need more health. Um, yeah, because that does run robe. six to seven hundred from DKC there, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the blue robe could have been a um, water hag, though, which you can do with this party. Water hag just needs three hits. You've got a good anchor set up. Oh my god. <laughs> well, if you were a fan of two adamant armors, how about three? Because uh, hitting up uh, Yang on the head just gave us our third adamant armor. Well, I mean, you got to. Three is just extra gravy, I guess to say. Three is just silly. We're 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 in silly amounts of adamant armor territory. And Martin saying goodbye to his ex gal uses it as a dart to Martin get through says, this wyvern. Martin says, you know what? Cecil shows up, I don't care. Goodbye, ex gal Cash it in here. We'll see if he regrets the decision later. We don't know where that Cecil is. We do have the power on this team to get through the entire seed. Excal's real powerful, though. And we got Twin Harp and Dragoon Lance from turning into the pan. So, I mean, another key out of location, long check. Uh, but I think Wu may end up going to Baron first, is that's two versus one and a character so, check. Yeah, so going back to my play about uh, fading Dwarf Castle, Dwarf turned out to not be required. Uh, the reward was an edge and an adamant Ari bear that you arguably uh, do not need. 
now you're still probably gonna do it this week because you want um you want a chance at Cecil, but there you know there was a world where you didn't need to do it. But Wu with his uh one hit points and everyone is gonna go take on. Uh, let's just do the twin hop right now. Close Be by. It being being a man of the people, giving us music. I mean, I don't yeah, mind this also, at all. It's a good check. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people like to fade it. You know, when when you've got you're playing the numbers game of which location has more key items, it's probably going to give you more value. Sometimes you know, you kind of have to play the person you're racing against, thinking. Yeah, this person's not gonna go here. I'm gonna do it and hope that it pays dividends. Yeah, this is truly um, Wu and Martin's, I'd say, second chance at forcing any sort of divergence in the seed. The first was about the Dwarf Castle play or not, but they both chose to make it. Um, of course, they don't know if, you know, they don't exactly know if both, uh, they don't know that their opponent did it, but they could assume probably for the character check. But uh, the, the Twin Harp play, it's sort of like if you're going to do the Twin Harp, I think it's now or never, because you're already right here, you're already at one hit point, and uh, that Edge, or even the, the Torn, can easily like get through the fight. So, we'll see if Martin ends up eventually wanting to take that Twin Harp, but for now, yeah. I think we've got some music to come. Oh, this is where we continue to keep talking, right? I mean, we could, but being the restreamer, I would just... I would just mute you, so... <laughs> Probably not. Enjoy the music! And it's just a sand review. It is a gated character check, so it could be that Cecil or even Fu. I don't remember the name of that song, but uh, do love me some Chrono Trigger. The seed reminding Wu that uh, time is running out. <laughs> Jeff Engine could be Edward. For, at the sand for that spoon. Uh, you know, Eddie being a glass candy, got the spoon, got it out of an armor. Like, mm, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Wu may actually take an Edward here. Definitely gonna check this character uh, because you're pretty obligated to at this point. You did the Twin Harp, and uh, if it's a Cecil, that would make up the time spent easily because that's probably the only Cecil in the seed. Also, checking the weapon shop here really tells me he's looking for just something else for Edge. Uh, Cat Claw is really not going to do it long term. It is an Edward. He says, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Edward is, is so much of a glass cannon. His HP pool does not grow very fast. 
So, I mean, he, he's, he died to a big bang, and then you're out 5,000 damage. Yeah, the awkward thing is, uh, yeah, you really have to babysit him at this Ernus fight, but... Boy, does he accelerate things early in mid-game. The thing is, we have the power we need. Um, you can lean on him with that spoon and out of an army. You can lean on him late game on, on, you know, on the moon and beyond as well. So it, it was certainly an option, but Wu says, you know what, no, I don't want him. Uh, I'm going to bank on finding Cecil at Baron Castle instead. Meanwhile... Yeah, Martin, yeah, that's a... <laughs> 750, that was a high roll on everybody. Martin is forcing divergence. Taking a look at that DKC, seeing if it's doable, pausing a moment, thinking about it. I'm going to say no, because we're not healthy enough, but certainly going to check that blue robe if, if we have you, it already. If you've got at least three Cure Threes, or even two of them, Edge technically has enough health. You just have to drop it down to BS6 and yeah, but let everybody die from the first wave and then just run buffer everything. That was a long wait, so that's the alt gauntlet there. Yeah, the problem is that with all your party, you need a second party member alive to throw that second care free. I'm, I'm pretty certain Edge won't have time to get through those cure threes out by himself. I could be wrong about that. Uh, Martin certainly not willing to test it because he just says I'm out. We've got some orbs here, but Martin did pick up a couple of ninja swords in the Fey March. Ninja swords are, I mean, Edge will be really happy with those. Edge is very, very powerful now with uh, those. Certainly way more powerful than Wu's. Mm -hmm. Just a matter of it, will it catch Martin up? I mean, if Martin decides to go straight to Baron instead of doing Twin Harp, uh, that'll definitely catch up some time there. Yeah, it looks like we have the actual king of Baron being the king, and not always being thrown in the basement. <laughs> I always love that, um, is it Scooby-Doo I'm thinking of? The the meme of, like, uh, taking off the mask of the, you know, of the enemy to reveal that it's actually the same person? <laughs> That's what it always makes me think of. <laughs> the, yeah. I... The old world reveals itself. Yeah, it's always one of those things, like, whenever I get to that spot, I'm always waiting. And I've gotten to the point where I can just look at an instance like, oh, yep, it's Odin. Because it, right when you first talk to the, the fake king there, there's a split second to where it actually shows the boss, and then it throws off the cloak, and it's just like, oh, it didn't change right away. I know who's here. So and we find this, the betrayer. This is not our, the reward we wanted, and yeah, Wu says no. Uh, we do have a Dragoon Spear, which is situationally very good, but uh, I don't think we have an Avenger. That might have been the only reason I'd consider him. Um, or, I mean, with a Dragoon Spear, it's not great, but um, it would at least be two Zerkers for Aromas. But, you know, maybe Wu's just not thinking about Zerkers at this point. Um, to go back to the, the Edward, the Spoonward point, um, Spoonward does enable a Zerker strategy on this team where it doesn't really exist easily at the moment. And uh, there's our darkness, finally. That's at the Baron yeah. Pot. It's but not locked we'll... behind that Fey March. Will Wubear check the Baron basement? Uh, yep. Because it is a key item location. Looks like he's going. Not quite go mode. We're very, very close. We just need the Earth Crystal, which could be literally anywhere. The seed yeah. is suddenly very open. Could be in the Fae March. Could be at the Odin Throne. If it's at the Odin Throne, maybe it's you consider that's more linear, because I'm almost certain both runners are going to check the Odin Throne, unless you forget, basically. Because you're certainly powerful enough to take on whatever's down here. So there's another Lunar Sparkle. There's not many left. We find oh. a Pale Den. That leaves just the D-Lunars, I believe, in the pool. Yeah, you know what would be really nice for this Pale Den down here? What? That Dragoon Lance King. I'm all on some levels on him, unfortunately, so we'll just make do. Martin getting through the orbs with the gold quake from Palum. 
will he go down the parent basement first or get the character first? No, you you have so much to do. You really only want to do the Odin Throne first if it's like you're banking on it being your cow mode. Which, okay, I guess that could maybe have the Earth Crystal in it, but you need... Martin needs two QMs. He needs Darkness as well. And you really want to see the character anyways, so... Yeah, you definitely do what he's doing first. Won't have any trouble with Odin up there. No, it has a Thunderclaw, but I don't think he's going to swap all her. I think it's just a smack in the virus and should be over. Okay, two smacks. We, we, we let Rydia hit a king, okay? <laughs> it did hit things. She, she can summon a king and she also got to hit a king. We're good. So we have Darkness. We know we have to do Mura and Masa. We have the pass. Do you go top down or do you go bottom up? You have more than 10 key items. It's more efficient to do top down, but the top down is you do the Mura altar and then you run all the way to the bottom. Because you want to do both of them. It, it, it saves you the time of having to exit out and then go back in. It's like a minor save, but it is a save. Plus, the more altar is likely a little bit easier than whatever's at the bottom of the moon. You never know, but likely. Yeah. We get the Luka key. Are you a runner that likes to, to tie up any loose ends before going to the moon? Do you fade that Luka key, or do you check it? Wu says no to the Luka key. I say yes. Uh, I like checking Luka. Now, <laughs> it... When the race is this close and the seat is this linear, it it would really play in my mind. Because it is time lost if Luka has nothing. The thing about Luka, though, is that it is relatively quick to run down there and just see the key item. If it's nothing, you just leave. You just, you just reset out and you, you know, never worry about it again. Um, it would... It could only really have the Earth Crystal as uh, something that gets you into go mode. Now, of course, we've got these Moon Altars to do, and maybe those have Earth Crystal and have the Earth Crystal instead. So, if there's a situation where you're going to fade Luca, it's pretty tempting right now. It does still cost you maybe a couple minutes total to do it versus not just face checking yeah. it. I mean, there is an argument to to raise the whale and then save here, go check Luca. If it's nothing, you're right back at the whale. Do a save's come that way? Yeah, but let's say Wu decided to check the Luca and then Martin didn't, and it wasn't at Luca. that would... That, that probably would actually just catch Martin up in the race, as Martin is just, like, a little bit behind at the moment. Yeah, just one boss check and and a, you know, lunar cutscene. Which... In all grand schemes, is not that far behind. Like it could still be anybody's race here. Yeah, the Luca. It's very win or lose at the moment. Like it either has what you need, or you very well could lose because you checked it because it's just that close. Now you don't exactly know that your opponent's this close to you, but you can guess. You can guess that you're probably neck and neck. You've got you've got a pile of adamant armors. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. nothing has challenged you this seed. Yeah, the only thing that's really challenging is that DKC. Now, we do have a bit more HP on our party. We could finish up that Fame Arch. Granted, that alt gauntlet does take forever to get through, but we do have hourglasses that we did buy from Eblen. Yeah, it's just, it's so tough to justify when you have to do these uh, lunar altars, and either of these lunar altars, or really the rest of the moon, could have... Uh, the Earth Crystal. It's... It is still anyone's game at this point. If Martin stays and locks up behind Wu Bear, Wu Bear is in the lead, but we've opened up enough... We've opened up enough that, like, any divergence will absolutely change uh, what's happening here. Wu Bear wanting that Rosa decides to take her. Replaced, I'm gonna guess, the Porum or maybe the Palin. Which was it? Right. I missed it. I missed it as well. We'll find out as soon as we get into the party. I we think some all sorts of things, chat. <laughs> These runners are so fast. 
Plus, there's so much to look at and talk about. It's like it's easy to get distracted by one thing and then <laughs> the thing on the other, the, the other yeah, screen sure happens. Yeah. My guess would be the porn, just uh, upgrading the white mage, basically. The one thing I would say about getting rid of Porum that has caught me before is that you don't have access to exit sometimes, but we've got Telus, so that's fine. Yeah, we've at least got Telus, we at least have exit since we're going all the way down to the LST. Probably gonna be doing Ribbon Room first, that 200,000 experience is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, we'll, uh... Dude, deciding the top, the bottom up instead of top down. Um, I think both choices are very close. Bottom up will definitely give you more options of bosses to get experience from, so I can I, I can see it from that angle as possibly being the better play because we don't really have a lot of levels at this point. We have adamant armor is making up for the fact that we don't have levels uh, with the multipliers that they give. I think that was so, the other fact of there's more key items, there are more key item possibilities down here. You've got four. Uh, so maybe hope with a spike and earth crystal and then can skip the rest of the moon altars. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it, the the thing about the top of the moon is that it's an objective, so, you know, there is still the mindset of do your objectives. But, yeah, you know, uh, all of the choice happens to be down here. But then now, because you chose to come down here, are you obligated to do the entire bottom of this moon and even the crystal sword altar before you go up and finally check? It, this is a point. This is a point of divergence. That so, line uh, at the ribbon room <laughs> is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. First of Me all, meanwhile, we did get a raid from RPG Limit Break. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, this race has been uh, just about neck and neck. Uh, early on, we got you know a starter hook. We got pink tail, uh, rat tail, and rat tail it into tower key. So all of our objectives are right now. We're just looking for the Earth Crystal. Most of the overworld is completed, except for uh, the Fey March and Luca Cave. Beyond that, uh, it could be up here on the moon. Yeah, uh, Chad, so much is going on. These runners are so neck and neck that it, it is it is almost hard to pause <laughs> to find moments. Um, because it's just, there's so much to talk about. This has been a very exciting race. Uh, Wu getting rid of that uh, spoon in his inventory, throwing it right at Antlion, don't blame him. This is a lot of health at this spot. Wu made the play that you were talking about though, of going to the ribbon room. One, it's two key items, and it's also just a big pile of experience that'll make the rest of the altars down here easier, even though the objective is at the Masamune altar, and that might be your instinct to go do that altar first. Yeah, I think majorly for getting experience on that rose is probably the main factor of going to room first. Yeah, the other thing uh, to let y'all know about this race is that even though we started with a Rydia Tawa, which is a very low power start, uh, we started with the hook and then the freebie was the pink tail, so we had an adamant armor immediately. Then both runners were forced down a hook route where they both took Eblet Castle traps for experience found a second adamant armor and an Excalibur. Martin threw his, Wu didn't, but probably will throw his at some point now because Cecil at this point is probably not going to happen. Um, <laughs> and then they got a third adamant armor from both doing Dwarf Castle and the Pan Bonk, which came from Dwarf Castle, the Pan, uh, the Pan Bonk was also an adamant armor. So we have a silly amount of adamant armors at this point. Yeah, and also picking up Leviathan in the Evelyn shop for that Viridia on very early on game. Side. Yeah, yeah, they they had that Leviathan immediately. Both runners did from a uh, cave Evelyn. Now, yeah, to your point, Martin, uh, having chosen to keep the Viridia. Okay, so it was the Viridia that we let go of on Wu's side. I think that's a heads up play thinking of the end game because. If you want to do sort of a hybrid, or really just a reflect strategy. <laughs> oh <my> God! <laughs> <laughs> Stardust I... and an adamant. Well, okay, we have four adamants. <laughs> look, look, game. Look, if we find another adamant armor, we can't use it. Do we really want to use the fourth one anyways? Which we'd like to have an anchor. At least on Martin's side, I'm thinking more of like a, a reflect strat. So, you know, doesn't worry about the agility anchoring. Wu side has the Tela still near base level, wants to keep that anchor. So 
all the fourth out of an armor? All right, so the top moon altar only had a Murasame, so Wu will almost certainly have the advantage with the routing choice that he's made here. At least on Martin's side, it's another dart for that ant line. 42,000 is a lot to get through. Elements at the Masamune altar, if you reflect spells, it is much easier than the alternative, especially because... Um, so this is the Four Fiends. This goes from the Mylan Z phase, which just punches, I say just. It would normally be... Actually, what am I saying? We have Adam in armor. Nothing about this fight is challenging anymore. The spot punches very hard, and the ruby phase of this fight does a crap ton of magic damage, but it's all fire-based, and Adam in armor just says, yeah, that's cute. I don't care. So really, it's just what's the faster option of getting through, and Wu says reflecting fire threes is faster because that will skip the the refill script of the second half of the fight and we'll only have to deal half the damage. Yeah, so it only should be two, maybe three fire threes if they hit for quad dines and this fight's gonna be over. Yeah, going back to your point about reflex strats, I think Wu is also sitting on a reflex strat and um, it might be heads up of him to get rid of the Rydia because now maybe you don't really need the anchor. Like maybe that's like maybe you just get rid of the the talent instead. Maybe that would have been smarter. But um, getting rid of Rydia means you just need less experience to get her to nuke. Which you, I'm not sure she'd get there even with all the moon experience and the giant. I'm actually not positive about that. It's very possible she would have. But yeah, as we're looking on on Martin's side, level 35 Rydia. I have to do some quick math because Martin still got you know at least 700 thousand. 200 from the Riven Room, 500 from the Giant, unless there's a split HP boss on the Giant. Which very well could be. I don't think we've seen them all. We've seen a number of them, though. I actually think there's some freebies out there still. I don't think we've seen the Dark Imps, right? No, we haven't seen the Dark Imps, and we haven't seen the Baron Guards yet. And there's Golbez. Well, there's one of the split uh, EXP bosses. That gold, that's gold bears in the White Spear Altar. Wu says, no, nah, I'm good. No, I mean, it is a it's long It's free, fight. it's time consuming. I'm good. That fight would normally be annoying, but again, we have three or even four adamant armors. Nothing about what Wyvern, uh, about what, what gold buzz does is a problem anymore. You can't paralyze the party, you can't kill the party with Fang, and none of the spells except Virus will do anything, and that spot has no magic attack power anyways, so the Virus wouldn't even hurt. It's just time-consuming. That's the only reason that Wu said no thanks to it. Yeah, so after doing some quick calculations, uh, just between the Ribbon Room and the Giant, if it's not a split EXP boss at the Giant, uh, Rydia would only need another 20,000 experience to get Nuke from her current level. Yeah, so she Shut probably up. would get nuked then. Um, but Wu, Wu letting go of Rydia says to me that he doesn't really trust that she would get nuke at the end game, And that, like, yeah, Leviathan's nice, but it, its usefulness is starting to peak versus just the tier 3 elemental spells and then nuke from Palin. But I sort of like Martin's play of having Porum instead. I'm not sure I would knock her down. You have four adamant armors. Like, what do you need? And Wyvern is gone. Like, what do you need anchoring for at this point? And actually, Martin. it's picking her back up. Martin oh, he doesn't done. have the fourth Adamant armor yet. He doesn't have the Ribbon Room. Right. I'll find that. Yeah, you definitely get a little Martin. bit of experience before doing Ribbon Room. Uh, you know, trying to get as much experience on his party as possible before going in there, just in case it is a nasty boss, which well, also, we know it is. Yeah. Also, Martin took the idea of doing objectives first and hoping that either of them had the Earth Crystal. Now, neither of them did, so... Now it's a question of how much of this moon do you do. It's probably all of it. The next point of divergence is going to be if Martin decides to take that white square altar or not. Like, I'm not sure if Martin realizes it, because it's so hard to know, you know, when you're in it. But he is a little bit behind at the moment. His two runners yeah. are basically in lockstep, but he's just a couple steps behind Wu. Crystal Sword Art um, Altar only had Artemis arrows, that's not it. And Wu hasn't done top of the moon either, so actually maybe it's a little closer than I'm thinking. Yeah, top of the moon, right yeah. Martin's just a tad bit ahead. Uh, Wu 
fading the gold as saying, nope, not gonna do it. You know, it's woo, that's just a tad bit ahead. It's not by much though. Uh, there's also K value still. We don't know what's there. Not a yeah, lot of so... spots left for this earth crystal though. No, not at all. I mean, I think, you know, if you're gonna leave a spot on the moon, I'd almost say it'd be the Crystal Soul Altar, leaving the White Spear. It's such a long walk down there. I mean, yes, you are looking for one key item, but it's, it's such a long walk back. I think it's a long walk back to either of them, because you do have to go kind of out of your way to get to the, the Crystal Sword Altar. It's really, it's, it's race winning or losing to abandon either of those checks at this point. And those are the choices that they're left with at the moment. It's like, oh god, there's an Earth Crystal somewhere, and there are a number of open things to do. Like, do I choose to make a fade? Do I just choose to do everything? I probably don't have time to do everything, because if my opponent fades something and he makes the right fade, he's gonna win. Ugh. <laughs> This is a very nerve-wracking situation. I am, I'm, I'm very glad I'm watching this race and I'm not in it at the moment. <laughs> I mean, at least you have look, looking forward to, to both of these racers in the future. Uh, how do you feel? Oh man, yeah. So this is, uh, we're all in the Ograx group. Uh, Martin, Wu, and I. And um, I mean, I would use the word terrifying. Terrified. We like to use the word terrifying for, you know, runners that are very good, but. Martin's also a real good friend of mine, and I like Wu quite a bit, so I'm, I'm excited to face them. Win or lose, whatever happens, happens. It'll be tough, but I'm looking forward to it. Wu Bear gonna be putting those Artemis arrows to use here on Dark Elf. Once uh, he phase changes, uh, Rose is gonna be hitting for quite hard. And yeah, chat pointing out, I mean, uh, there are other people in Ograx that are also not very easy. Uh, Slippery got in a win against uh, Martin, and uh, sorry, my brain is freezing. If that was a spoiler, or not I guess it was last week, so it's okay. Sorry if that spoiled you, but um, Slippery uh, also in a group, kind of scared, and then Zilch also in this group, also quite scared of him. Like the, the <laughs> our entire Ograx group is. Um, we're definitely a group of death. There are a number of that, those in this tournament, though. Which is kind of what I like about how it's played out. The randomized groups. A lot of the groups ended up with a good number of people in it that are pretty equal at skill level. Oh no! Just led to a lot of really good races. Oh no! Wu reset out of the Murasami altar. Oh no. Yeah, so you're in face check mode, is what's on your mind. And you go do a check that doesn't have what you want in it and say, no, I'm good, I'm resetting out. Yeah, so he reset out of an objective. An objective. Ooh. We don't know, we don't know if, um... It's gonna be about if he if he recognizes that or not, and how soon he recognizes it, because he, he really needs to recognize it before he leaves the moon. Because he's gonna find the Earth Crystal somewhere else, because that, that only had an Avenger. Uh, but... Him realizing now, without having to redo the Lunar Whale cutscene twice would be a lot better. Alright, this is this is D-Lunar, so this is the only sparkle left in the pool. Now these guys are gonna punch hard. Uh, oh, wait. Never mind, we have four adamant armors. Does Breath even do anything? Uh, no, Breath won't even do anything. No, right? God. <laughs> now the one thing I might not do... Okay, Zerking is a little... Probably with the Artemis arrows, uh, they will do a lot of damage. The virus, the viruses can still hurt, but Rosa's angry. I don't think it's going to be a problem. The thing in this spot doesn't have that high of magic either. It's one of the less scary, uh, least scary spots for magic. Yeah, very true. So. I mean, w w when the dealers start chain gunning viruses and they they double down and you know deal enough damage to knock. You know, Rose out, for instance, that would be a little scary, but we were pretty smart to recognize that he can get through that uh, by punching it really hard instead of taking it slow. So, I mean, the, his efficiency is still playing off here. And the Wu is a runner that we haven't really seen a whole lot of. That's just an adamant. That's the entire moon, right? Yep, that's the entire moon. Oh, and that's a problem because now we're it. leaving. So he didn't recognize. So Wu's not going to recognize that he forgot that altar until the very end of the game. Hopefully, 
realizing that once he finishes the Tower of Zod, he doesn't get his Earth Crystal. Sorry, that he doesn't get his crystal. <laughs> his crystal crystal. Like, hopefully at that point is when he recognizes it. The worst point would be, you know, you go to the... <laughs> this is another thing we've all been there, right? Like, you go, yep. you have the pass, you go to Zeromus, you get in the fight. And then you go into your item inventory after that long wait, and you go, wait, where's my crystal? Ah, oh, crap. And, and then you realize, oh no, what did I forget? And, yeah. and it could be something as simple as grabbing the item from Twin Harp. Because for complete Magnus, you have to grab the item. And getting uh, some information from Yobari, who is restreaming both of these runners. Um, the way the restreaming works is, is that you get a full view of both runners, and then you kind of crop the views to get to what we were seeing. So uh, Yobari is able to see Wu's personal tracker at the moment. I suppose I could do it if I loaded up his his Twitch page, but uh, Nyobari let us know that Wu has the Marasani altar marked as completed, so he for sure does not realize. And yeah, he not. probably he probably checked it off and then saw the item and reset and forgot that it was actually an objective. Yeah, I mean... But when you're in a high-tension race, like, you know, in a tournament it's setting... so easy to do. One little mistake. We've seen like forgotten Demists. You know when D <laughs> remember Demist is a thing? Oh yeah. <laughs> Normally yeah, we don't have Demist. the freaky on. Yeah. Easy to forget about that. We've seen that to side races before from forgetting her. Cannot so. This is actually a somewhat challenging boss at six to five thousand health. Now, there is a way through it. You box us immediately, which is what we was doing so that you can control. The waves. Lit 3, I think, is going to be too slow, but I could be wrong. Deuce Rage will be fast enough. So what's going to happen... This spot's very fast, so it's, it's always going to operate the same way with this kind of anchoring setup. Okay, now, so punches once, raises up the water, and then it's going to cast an AoE wave dealing like 2% of his health, which 2% of 65,000 health, plus or minus some change, is a lot. So you have to manage these waves a little bit so that they don't go off and deal enough damage to where the, the wave isn't lethal anymore. So getting that immediate setup was very important, and Wu did it perfectly. It's actually 4 to 6% of his yeah, it's, uh, it's remaining a lot. HP. It's a, it's a lot of 65,000 hit points. It, it, it would, and Adamant Armor doesn't, doesn't, it, 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 it kind of goes through that, so. Yeah, Adam and is great, but but for something that does what we call true damage, uh, so like the waves, um, aside from the Leviathan and um, Okopogo waves, which you actually can dodge, uh, Leviathan's wave, DKC's dark wave, and Virus are all true damage. They don't care about your magic defense or your magic evade. Yeah, but Wu is... I imagine has done enough damage now that he doesn't really need to worry about it. I think that Palin is has charged up a lit three. And they actually get the timing right to Oh he charged up an ice three. Okay, so Kanatsu has Thunder Weakness with the wave up and an ice weakness. Maybe at all times it looks like that Ice Three did a ton of damage. Also he's wearing Adam and Armor, so whatever. But we've done enough damage now. The wave is almost certainly no longer a problem. We're gonna do some amount of damage, but yeah, we don't die to it. That's the main thing. It did quite a bit, and good thousand on our party that has, you know, max of 1,500, you know, it, it, it hit pretty hard still. So. Yeah, with Rosa Berserk up, maybe it's a little scary. But I trust Wu to be able to navigate the rest of this fight. Yeah, we're already in the shell. Martin doing his K value check, realizing it's not there. Pretty sure he's also done with the moon, also gonna head to the giant. Uh, well, we would have said Wu was ahead, but unfortunately, Wu did reset out of the Murasame altar, uh, which was an objective, or is an objective. Very, very easy thing to do. Uh, the Mura altar didn't have the key item he wanted, so just sort of reflexively reset out of that. Marked on his tracker that the Mura is done, so he, he doesn't know at least yet. Now that, that any point throughout 
it may come to him that he act that he reset out of that and he'll go back to the moon and do that um certainly hoping he does it when he finishes his tower of Zot check which has to be from the fame arch at this point right fame arch or luca one of the two. Oh, luca neither runner went to luca oh god what if it was at luca this entire time you know it, 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 it's it's one of those things the thing about the earth checks is that the weighting, the, the, the way the algorithm works, the weighting is a little bit higher, actually quite a bit higher on the earth checks being in the total key item pool. So it makes, even though Luca's a longer check, it, it makes it a more valuable check in my eyes than than others. But both runners played the odds of, well, I have the one check in Luca versus the six on the moon and I have to do objectives. I'm gonna take the six instead. This didn't pay out this time. Oh, we're gonna get the offslot Palom with stone. If, yep. if you had some coffins, this would be a really good spot to get some extra experience. Certainly would be worth it for the radio if we still had her and we were at all concerned about getting her nuke, but... Wu says, yeah, I'm done. Stone. I got my white. I'm gonna get my... got my nuke. We're at endgame levels. We're ready to go. Yeah, still got the 300,000, so it, it's not as bad as finding, like, Golbez or Baigan there, which really hinders the amount of experience you can get there. Oh, hey, look, it's Paladin Sussel. Oh, hey, we have some stuff for you. Are, are we going to take you, or are you going to hit the curb? I would be shocked. I would be flabbergasted if we took this Cecil. Yeah, well, I, I mean, there is, the, there is still that alt gauntlet at Leviathan spot. Yeah, he says no, I'm good. Yeah. Wu does, Wu does love his Cecil. Wu is one of the, uh, uh, the originators of the go to Castle Eblen and get your holy sword uh, on, you know, on previous flag sets, Wu is, you know, one of our runners since what, I want to say before Fubul Gauntlet? Or maybe Fubul yeah. Gauntlet was around the time that he really kind of came to prominence. But, I mean, at this point, you've already got your endgame levels. You'd have to get experience on Sessa, and you can't slingshot him because you only have four party members max, so... Uh, and I don't blame him. But, yeah, you know, Luca's on mind for sure. This is the part where you think, oh god, I faded this and my opponent didn't. They could be at the Z fight right now. Of course, we know pie in the sky. Both runners faded Luca. Yeah, Martin having a little bit of issues here with this. Uh, with this K now, so it is not an easy fight. You have to nerf the first wave, if not the first two, with the amount of HP that's at this spot. This is a nasty fight here. This is basically hook route. This is basically hook route 2.0. It's the same exact problem. You cannot deal enough damage without avoiding that first wave. You have to cancel it somehow. The reason the Bacchus from Wu was so good immediately, even though it was his Rosa, which he didn't really want to Zerk her, but he did, because with the Zerk attacks, you get the, the ATB is frozen while the attack is going off, and uh, Zerk basically cheats the ATB system and goes twice as often as it really should um so that just gives you the time to do the menuing that you don't have otherwise otherwise you'd have to drop the battle speed very low um and then dropping the battle speed low it's still that the timing of canceling the wave is it's really tricky the game wasn't really meant to be played in this way where because of the agility situation i'm gonna pause a moment the earth crystal was at luca oh god <laughs> so this is gone loud <laughs> Not at the Fame Arch. Going back to Kainatsu, so the timing... The short of it is that the timing from when the wave comes up to when you can cancel the wave with a lit cast, it's it's incredibly tight uh, because Kainatsu is in a situation where he's not really meant to be. You're meant to have a, a good, generous amount of time to, to do this, but um, you don't at this spot, essentially. You have to... You have to get in actions that let you pause that ATB system so that you can then get out a cast 
so that you can then knock down, because it's a lot more deterministic. Because we've proven that you can just, uh, the, the, the first actor zerking, second actor throwing like a Thor Rage or a lit one or whatever, um, that works pretty well. And it works well on the hook route too, if you ever find yourself on that nasty hook route. Yeah, it looks like Martin's having a much, much easier time. The wave does get off. Has he done enough damage to be able to survive? Uh, well, I mean, Rydia dodges completely. <laughs> that dodge was perfect. She'll cast the Leviathan. Um, I think he had that Ashura. I don't know if he actually used the Ashura summon uh, to learn it, but Rydia could use that to um, and act as the White Mage, either picking people up or hopefully healing instead. But yeah, the elixir or, or, is just as good at that. Yeah, it definitely wants to life up that edge to continue out the extra damage, uh, knowing that at least edge will survive the wave. It's, it's done some more damage as well. Still a little tricky though, but I think edge is dealing enough damage that he won't get locked out of the regen phase, which is something that does happen when you have one zerker left, uh, when Kenatsu goes into the shell form. But. Rydia survived that wave hit, so we're going to be able to recover, and Martin will certainly be through this fight now. Wu now heading to Zot, going to go finish up what should be his last objective. Unfortunately, we have faded that. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, <laughs> hopefully not Wu if you're listening to this back. It's not to harp on it, on it happened, but it's for just in case anyone who stepped back in might not know the full situation. Um, Wu did the Murasame altar, but reset out of it. We don't know if it was reflexively or what. It's something, it's very easy to do in that situation because the Murasame altar didn't have anything, but it's an objective that's still outstanding that I'm, we don't think he realizes yet. Yeah, at least I do 65,000 in the Remedy and Edge doing, you know, around four, four and a half. And I think it's two turns for every Remedy. So technically does do enough damage uh, it just take a long time. Yeah, I think he would have been fine by himself, uh, I agree. And I was kind of getting to that conclusion, but then Rydia didn't die anyways, and so it, it's it's going to be certainly we're going to get through this fight. But yeah, Wu with his giant of Babel objective done, and Martin's about to get his giant objective done too. It's really just the Tower of Zot. And then for Wu, it's getting back to the Mar Altar, which, with them being this neck and neck, very well might cost him this race, even if he realizes it immediately after the sod. It's going to come down to... We're going to assume Wu remembers, you know, to keep, you know, the drama here. And when he does, it's going to be really come down to, I think, the speed of the Zermus fight, because Martin will be in it first. Almost it's, certainly. If Martin goes to Luca first instead of going to the Fae March. That's true, that's true, that's true. He might he might go to the Fae March instead and say, you know what, Luca is just my fate, I'm gonna live or die by it. And he would certainly die if he <laughs> if he made that choice. Yeah. And chat mentioned that's a that's a chunky remedy. Remedy always does ten percent of the max HP of the spot. So you can kind of uh, notice how much spot an HP spot has for like for CPU. The remedy that the defender does is always ten percent. So you know how much damage you have to do to be able to kill the big orb. Yeah, but to your point, Edge was doing about 3 to 4k a swing, and you get two of those swings to one 6500 HP regen, so it would have taken a while, but Edge alone would have gotten through it. Wu, in the meanwhile, is just blazing through this uh, Zot. You're at endgame levels, no reason to save. Wyvern's out of the pool, don't have to worry about that. Just fight a Fusoya. I'm actually pretty interested in Fusoya. This is gonna finish out our... Um, reflect party strategy. Doesn't even want the edge. We don't have the spoon anymore. We don't really have... I think we have an Excalibur. Might be the one good dart left, but he might have used it already. Instead, by taking this Fusoya, you now leverage... You now lean completely into uh, a reflex strategy. Uh, we'll yeah. kind of speed that up for both our runners. Or at least speed Is it Mar up for Wu. I think I think Martin won't need, Fus uh, won't need Fusoya. Right. I'll take him anyways. Um Something to mention here, Martin trying to cast Stone with Rhea and then do a life pot right after. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for those of you that may not know, if you actually cast Stone on an enemy, you cannot life glitch them. Yeah, they don't, well, they die, but they don't die to damage, they die to petrification. You can <laughs> instead actually heal them with the heal item, 
Um, that won't really. I don't. I don't think that works as life glitching though. But I mean, it's a no, thing it that. Doesn't. Yeah. It's an interesting bug I saw involving the summoner and stoning the summoner enemy, and then using a heal pot that, with like a certain situation, causes like infinitely summoning enemies. You get locked in the battle though, so it's not really very useful. Also, don't know if that's just vanilla 1.0 or not. Woo, getting the Artie bow, not getting the crystal. Yep, Rialis looking at his cracker. Yep. Sees the Conquer the Mursan I alter. Probably giving one real big uh, sigh or number of expletives <laughs> at this current moment. Gotta go back to the moon. Yep. At least he recognized it right now. Absolutely needed to do that. Yeah, I question Yeah, he where goes to the moon. Gosh, Wu might actually still be ahead enough that he's fine. It's like hard to see. It was a little hard to see earlier, but Martin's gonna get on the airship here. He's gotta go to Luca immediately. And he's not. Where are we going? Oh, Twin Harp. Did Martin fade Twin, twin harp? harp? Yes, he faded Twin Harp. Oh, wow. Okay, oh, I missed no. that. All right, well, he had to go to. Okay, he dropped down. He had to save. Okay. And he said That's... no. He said no. You know what? Let's put our safety save here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna set up like a reset chain. The fastest thing to check should be Luca. So he's yep. gonna do that now, and that's where he's going. And if this is nothing, he gets to reset all the way back to the Twin Harp. Okay. That that is some yeah, sa making different saves at different locations. A, a, a true masterful style of saves coming, having multiple different saves all over the place in case you don't find what you're looking for. As long as you can keep track of your saves, you're pretty well off on that. It was a little scary, and it's actually going to lose him like a tiny amount of time, but it, it is very smart uh, in a, from a hedging perspective, because if Luca didn't have it, then you would save a lot of time resetting all the way back to the Twin Harp instead of resetting back out and having to fly all the way up and over there. So Martin will get his go mode, so both our runners have their go mode. Martin just has to do Luca and then Earth. Wu just has to do Mura Altar. I, th I actually think Wu is still in the lead. Both have the pass. I mean, it all depends on how fast this Dark Elf fight goes. I mean, we have nukes, white whites. Don't cast white on Dark Elf. It's a bad idea. No, I imagine Wu won't do that, though. I mean, yeah, he's already got gotten through this fight before. He certainly can do it again, yeah. The second half of the Dark Elf fight, when it turns into the Dark Dragon, for whatever reason, loses the boss bit, so able to cast the weak spell on it, put it to single-digit hit points, and then <laughs> bonk it with the staff with Rosa. Wu finishes the Murasame altar. He's gonna get his crystal. He's gonna be Zoromus ready. I think yep. we'll probably hop in the whale and use the pass. Wu, uh, yeah, that would be faster. Wu is our first runner to get to get a pass. So even though he had to do that Murasame altar twice, this just shows both our runners took very much the same route through a lot of the seed, uh, but Wu happened to do it just a little bit faster. Uh, didn't check as many shops as Martin did, and uh, possibly was more efficient in, in fights. It's, it's kind of hard to tell um, when you're sort of in it the way we are right now. It's the kind of thing yeah. you have to kind of go back over as a runner to really see where you've lost the time, but however Wu managed to do it, Wu has been in the lead for some time and has continued to take that lead, even though it was hard to see to see a little bit earlier. And is going to be the first at Zoromas, and I'm going to say at this point almost certainly will be the winner. He would have to wipe at Zoromas. Now at this party with the Adamants we have, I, I seriously doubt there would be a wipe. No, but, the uh, fight might the fight might have been challenging without the Fusoya, but not really. But with the Fusoya, we just have a full reflect party. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing some uh, some flags in chat. Is it uh, is it time to go to bed already? That's the Mylan Zed fan club. Oh, what what what, what club is that? I, I, it's the first time I'm hearing of it. Well, it's a club where you're a fan of Mylan Zed. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know who this is. This is Aromas. Uh, 
How about you do the, the Zoroma's talking points? So with this randomizer, we may randomize just about everything, the characters, where bosses are. Uh, the one thing we don't really randomize is where the final boss is, Zoroma's. He's always here and will always be here. Uh, so to stay in true randomizer fashion, we decide to change who he is. So with over, was it 500 different sprites in the pool? We get to ask, whose butt are we gonna kick tonight? Yeah, I've gotten this confirmation earlier and Scholar Kitty giving it now. It's over 550 sprites. That's a that lot is, of sprites. That's a lot of butts. A lot of JPEGs. There's so many JPEGs. Like, so many. Yeah, and they're all them. they're all amazing. Most of them are done by Scholar Kitty. Some of them uh, earlier on were done by Board, who is our resident dev of Free Enterprise. They're all really fantastic, though. Yeah. And let's see who it is. Oh, I'm going to call this a cute butt. It's a. Uh... Wow. Brain <laughs> blanking. I know the game, but I can't think of the name. What is this from? Undertale. It's Sans. Thank you. If Thank you, you go the genocide route, you have to fight Sans. I'm getting bad memories in my head of this boss fight. I spent. I think total game time, like 12 hours to try and get through this boss fight. But if you don't go down that right, then then he's just great. He's your friend and it's everything's great and lovely. Sans is great. Uh, but Sans is certainly going to be the one having a bad time <laughs> as he's going to get the business end of all of these reflected spells. Now, if you haven't played Undertale, fun game. Now, the reason we're reflecting these spells, for anyone who may not know, Zoromus, and a lot of bosses, or I guess a number of bosses that um, have more than 65,000 hit points, the way that the devs got around this limitation of SNES programming to have more than 65,000 health is to have a, a hit point refill script. So Zoromus has more like 100,000 health, but when you reflect spell damage, you do not trigger uh, scripts, including the hit point refill script, or the hit point refill script. So this essentially only does, you only have to do half the damage to get through the fight this way. That's why we're, we're reflecting the spells, not directly targeting. Most directly targeting is almost likes to counter with nuke, it's annoying, wastes time. It's a good way to nerf, but I don't need to nerf. We're wearing Adam and Adam nine's coming out. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is all but over at this point. Yeah, I only gotta get through about 60,000 and... Yeah, you get some quad nines in there, the fight and just goes so fast. And there it is! Blue Bear is the winner of this match in the Ogre Axe group, winning out over Martin Broadcloak. Big GG's to Wu Bear. This is the first match of his group. He is going 1 and 0. Oh. Martin will be going 1 and 2. And uh, looks like we're joined by a Wu now. Gee, geez, Wu. Thank you. How right, about that it. early game? Uh, it was, it was a game, and it was early. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, your Lord and Savior Adam in armor? Oh, I can't get enough of it. What was that like four of them? I think in the seed. Yes. It's always funny when you get the fourth one. It's like, well, I'm not gonna put it on my anchor. I don't know. Thanks, I guess, but <laughs> sell it. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that actually, but I get real nervous at the end when I I um I did Zot and then I didn't get my crystal and I get slightly confused. So yeah, we're very grateful that you noticed and ran back. If you watch back, uh, you will listen to me say very frequently <laughs> about uh about that happening because it was. Uh, potentially game losing and I'm very glad that uh, you were able to go back and still win out. Very, very, very well played, very well raced. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, was, I was expecting Martin to dot done as I was going up to the moon to redo uh, Murasami. It was, it's a, like, I, I did Murasami and I, I marked it off on my on my tracker and then I saw Avenger and I reset out and I'm like, alright, well that's done. Moving on. And, uh, yeah, I just... <laughs> Right, because you're like, it's that. Avenger, I don't want that crap, I'm done. Avenger, yeah, it's gotta save the seconds and reset out. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty much my hallmark, though, I always forget something in a seed. 
dwarf castle it's, that means. It's very easy to do that. Very easy to do that. Well, you're one and only in this group now. Um, how you feeling? <laughs> uh, I feel like ask. How you feeling going into the rest of your group? Uh, I'm feeling better. Like, I, I was a bit jittery at the start of that. I haven't practiced much. I don't know whose decision it was to uh, start this tournament right after Elden Ring came out, but it wasn't a great one. But, uh, right? so yeah, I haven't, I haven't practiced a whole lot, so I was a bit, a bit jittery at the start. But I felt like I calmed down and, and played all right near the end, so. Yeah, I, I would say you played fantastically. Uh, you'll see this as you go back. I don't know what you and Martin might have talked about already, but, um, you and Martin were really basically neck and neck and you took out an early lead and it was a small one and it was really just through efficiencies. It was through slightly faster battles. It was through shopping a little bit less. I mean, these are things that like the, the kind of advantage that you get when you're practiced. So for being out of practice, like you put on a hell of a show. Thank you. Wow, yeah, that, 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 scary. <laughs> that, that early radio with, with the with the levy and the Adam and armor was was pretty pretty nice it was outrageous. my seeds like start like that I'll, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't complain hey well you know i wouldn't either if if, if when you and i face off if uh <laughs> so i i am also in this group when you and i face off if we get a power a start uh, uh, a start like that i will be nervous but i will be i will be happy to <laughs> to do that efficiency fight with you i am down it um i felt real bad getting rid of her i don't know why i did it's like for the edge i didn't have anything for the edge but the... I'm just very comfortable with like berserk strats, so it was silly. I should have kept the Rydia, but that's what it is. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you didn't trust that she'd get nuke at the very end, but and that you had darts with edge. But I mean, I, I that, think that was even, kind of the thing. Like afterwards, you know, like near the near the end, I, I figured I was gonna get Fu on Zot. Uh, chances are, so that's why I wasn't too worried about the edge there. But like I figured if I didn't, he was basically like a second nuker with an Excal and the other dart, and then. Uh, you know, just reflect the rest off of the HP off, so. Yeah, I figured two was coming, so. Either way, uh, Rosa, MVP, with the Artie bow and, and had him in armor. Yeah, also, um, I feel like I'm just gushing at this point, but doing that at Kainatsu and just recognizing immediately that you needed Debacus so that you could get away to get on that nerf that was also pretty heads up oh yeah it also saved you a bit of time against martin yeah it's, it's yeah super huge to clog up the queue and um get those berserks going not just clogging up the queue but like you, you need the consistent damage going to like lower the um yeah you know the wave damage so yeah, it was, it was, yeah. i was pretty lucky I, I i i got those zeus rages and it actually worked but uh yeah i was, I was pretty happy with that fight yeah, it went pretty smoothly for you and that's a that goes to show, even 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 if you haven't practiced that much, like playing free enterprise is almost like riding a bike. You can get right back into it. Oh, absolutely. Let's see what I usually do. I usually like come back for tournament times and you know play a bunch and get back into it. Yeah, that's what a lot of us do. I mean, it, and it's uh, we put on you know these two tournaments a year, so it, it it gives you the time to go hard into tournament mode if you want to, and then also kind of take breaks in between. It's something I appreciate as a runner personally. Absolutely. Well, that's about all I got. Anything else from you today? Question wise? No, I don't have anything myself, so. Alright, well, just big GG's to you again, Wu. Thank you. And uh, thanks to everyone, restreamers, and, and you guys commentate. I don't know who's restreaming and, and tracking, pushing the buttons, but thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Alright, thanks so much, Wu. Bye now. Alright, good night. All right, that was Wu, our winner. Uh, Martin, in the meanwhile, is in his Zoromus fight. Almost certainly going to get through this himself. The same party setup. Actually, even a little bit. <laughs> uh, he's, he's got all the mages. Um, anyways. Uh, Wu is the winner of this match. Shouting out the team, uh, since kind of Wu mentioned. Again, we've got Neil Bari doing the restreaming here, and Bardic Panda doing the tracking. Cannot have a race without really any of us, but certainly without our back-end crew, who is not visibly seen or heard. So definitely a big thank you and appreciation to them. And of course, to Bolt Michael Commentator. And then, you know, out to you too, Solaris Smooth. You've got a lot of knowledge in this game, and of course, both our runners. We, we may be able to put on a show here, but what will we commentate without the two runners? I mean, we would talk about I, uh, mm, 
Elden Ring? No, you're not playing that. I don't know, we'd talk about something, but it wouldn't be this game. Or if it would be this game, but it wouldn't be this race. No, it'd be more... I don't know. It'd be like a podcast at that point. <laughs> it's it. You wouldn't be here for that. Alright, <laughs> that is Martin's finish as well. GG's to Martin, and... Thanks! There's the man himself. <laughs> Good game, Martin. How you feeling? That was, uh, that, that, that was power over Philly. Yeah, how do you feel about Adam and Arma? You know... <laughs> how do you feel about four of them? I... I was, I was actually gonna sell one or go find a whistle somewhere and use it for the memes, but yeah. Oh, wow. wow, that would've been funny. Boy, they just were... I always joke about when we do these runs where it's like, hey, there's always one item that you always seem to get a lot of. You know, whether it's Lilith rods or something of that nature, this scene, nah, it's just adamant armor, you know? Uh-huh. Ah. Uh. That was something. And something to do with it early, too. I mean, with the uh, Rydia, with Leviathan, and Talon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Twin Cast. Like, you were, you were not short on <laughs> sources no! of damage, that seed. No, and the funny part was doing uh doing Evelyn trap chest that time. It was more of I just want to get the kid quack. It's yeah. like oh well here have a second one while you're at it. Like oh okay well yeah. And you'll I mean, see this gonna... when you go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not gonna put it back. I mean yeah, I'm gonna take it with me. So <laughs> no, I'm just gonna live here for the next guy. No, that's fine. No, take it back. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Adamant armor. I don't want that. No. Nah. <laughs> Uh, well, I was gonna say, you'll see this uh, when you go back, so I know you will. Mm. Uh, I don't know what you and Wu have talked about already, but really, mm. I think this came down to an efficiency race, because the two of you were... made a lot of the same decisions and were neck and neck, and both made the Luca fade, which turned out to be the kind of critical decision of the seed. You know, um, my gut, my gut. I was yeah. sitting there, and it, it was that, okay, I'm gonna launch the whale. This gives me about 10 seconds to decide, like... A minute and eight seconds. Do I want to go spy it? The other ones, I wasn't touching. There was no way I was doing the harp or that march. So it's like, all right, do I go spy it or not? It's nah, a tough call. I'll just go with the moon. It's more checks. The results Oops. oriented thinking is, yeah, no, just go to Luca. But like, that's still seven like a minute and a half or whatever of your time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, seven checks is bigger than four, you know? It made sense. And two objectives. So it's like, yeah. get it all done at once. And yeah, nope. Not this time. No, not this time. But so again, because you two ended up in lockstep, basically, uh, we happened to get through the seed, the fights and did a mm -hmm. little bit less shopping. That's really what it came down to. Yeah. And built up enough of an, an effect, enough of an advantage that even though he reset out of the Murasame altar and had to go back into it, with mm -hmm. the two whale cutscenes still had basically this much of a lead on you. It's pretty yeah. scary. Yeah, no, and, and to Wu, all the credit to Wu, I mean, you know, obviously talking to Possum a lot, and we all know how Possum turned out, and Possum's like, yeah, I, you know, I used to watch and listen to woo all the time it's like yeah so basically i'm racing possum's teacher like yep great this is this yeah this is a game or don't don't bother showing up so definitely some things i could have cleaned up in that seed but all the credit to woo woo lived up to everything i had heard so yeah remarkable racer so uh yeah solaris have fun with that one <laughs> <laughs> you know i told him if it, if it comes down to efficiency fight i look forward to it uh yeah, yeah other situations that's... oh boy i don't know yeah that's that's gonna be remarkable so no that was that was a lot of fun i i definitely enjoyed that probably could have you know not done with power over everything but you know eh, it works sometimes so. the seeds just they just have an idea of what they want you to do and you just yeah, have to then, run with it. Yeah, and then sometimes they just give you, you know, kind of so it's 65k as a parting shot on your way out the door. So, you know, that uh, happens too. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. I, it, it, it was a nice balance, I think, on Nayabari's part to be like, here, have a three minute adamant armor, but have Kainazo right at the end of the seed. Oh, I like, forgot to ask Wu this. Were you worried about an early go mode at all? I 
to a point yes the way the seed was going and the amount of key items that we were pulling i mean once we hit that 10 mark i'm just like all right if sirens are available on earth somewhere this is probably eggs to nuke and just go blow up everything at that point but not finding go well technically i could have found go mode on earth um uh, but no not really i mean there were there were there were ways around that party and obviously with foo up on uh zot you know foo and friends yeah, could sure. have been a reality so yeah which would have been actually pretty interesting but yeah mm -hmm. no yeah so Makes it, a lot it of sense could have been something but ah routing you know hey at least it wasn't the last check this time <laughs> <laughs> we're getting better that's right yeah that's absolutely right bright spots bright spots yeah just knock off Gotta one check them. each time you'll be fine yeah 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 I, I was definitely proud of myself at uh at uh oh god what's it called uh the march where it's like okay well cecil yeah no don't have enough hp for this one let me let me go let me go touch the other one and you're sitting there and i swear that one or two seconds that it just sits there feels yep. like a minute uh -huh. where you're like, you're like i know oh, what this no. is i'm not even yeah. waiting for the fight to load just reset yeah get me out of this yeah i know what this is this can stay there yeah 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 so yeah no it was it was a lot of fun i had a great time with it i'm looking forward to watching it back and seeing all the wonderful things that you two said about me <laughs> oh there were some jokes i bet there were so, there might have been one or two i i figured as much so but yeah now uh one and two and i have gemini and you yeah, left. yeah. so you know it's you know now, now we're in win or go home phase so i'm yeah yeah we're still i think our group still has more graces to to play before we mm -hmm. know kind of how open it becomes but yeah i mean it, it's gonna take knows. three and two probably to get into like i would imagine so. Yeah. so yeah it's it's win or go home so i don't know i play yeah. de better when i'm desperate so <laughs> well, there you, well, well, crap. I mean, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to facing you. <laughs> uh, you and me both. It's going to yeah, be a time. So. It'll be fun. Yeah. I really am looking forward to it. Yeah. But no, right. thank, thank you, obviously, to both of you for comms. Thank you to Nayabari for that gem of a seed. And uh, thank you to Panda for pushing buttons. And yeah, I look forward to watching it back. All right. Thanks so much, Martin. Thanks. Have a good one. Well, Solaris, it looks like our time here is done, but it's not the end of Free Enterprise just yet. No, it sure isn't. We are going to be heading over to Dr. Kosick, who is, um, I'm actually not sure. I'm going to guess practicing Free Enterprise Adamant Cup. That's going to be my guess. Yeah, it looks no like surprise chat. Mess. No spoilers. And we do have a race. We have another race coming up. We have at 11 p.m. Eastern, uh, Dishmu versus Sheep Launcher. And let me get the channel view on that. I'm guessing Free Enterprise. Yep, it's going to be Free Enterprise. Great. And then later on, a midnight race, uh, going to be Plumeria Knight versus Frankie Bone. So that one's not going to be restreamed. There will be a, a channel on our Discord, so be sure to join our Discord, and you can get the Cadgar link and watch them both at the same time as, as we, we like you know, restream. But there are so many races that are going on at any given day. Es especially tomorrow. Oh, my God. There are so many. There's so much free enterprise, y'all. But for now, that's it for us. Goodbye. Bye.